Welcome to the Prumihimo YouTube channel in lockdown. I'm using this as an opportunity to produce a small series of chatty informal videos where I take you through a few tips and tricks and things that I've learned uh, in over a decade of Kumihimo braiding. So this video is all about Kumihimo discs and how to choose them. So I'm going to remove these two and start with the original Kumihimo disc. This was designed and created by Makiko Tada and it's based on the traditional wooden braiding stand, the Japanese Marudai. It's a foam disc made of EVA foam, which is ethylene vinyl acetate, if you're interested. Um, and it has 32 slots around the circumference, a hole in the middle, numbers for each slot, and dots, orientation dots. So if we hold it like that, we've got north, south, east and west. So this is the starting point for most people. There are other people now who manufacture them, but this is the original. After a while, we started to see some variations. And the first variation really was in size. So the mini disc came out. Now, the size of the disc makes no difference whatsoever. The disc is actually used to separate the cords and to identify them. The braid is formed by the hand movements that you do, the movements of, of, of the cords. So a smaller disc does not make a smaller braid. What it does do um, is it, it provides a very convenient little disc for traveling. And also, if you're going to do beaded kumihimo, you may find this one's a little bit more convenient because sometimes you need to be able to reach to the middle with your thumb to push your bead down. And it's a much smaller reach. If you've got reasonably sized hands, you'll be able to reach with the larger one. For smaller hands, you'll find this a lot easier. So the next development was the thickness of the disc. So this is a centimetre thick, this one here is two centimetres thick. And this is the first one that I was aware of, the, the double density, double thickness, uh, produced by my friend Sally Battis. And it does exactly the same job as the original disc, but the slots are firmer and tighter. This means it's a more durable tool, and it also means that it can grip the cords very well. So if you're using a thick cord like this, satin cord or rat tail, virtually any disc can hold this very, very firmly. But once you move on to beading cord and using beads, you need the slots to really be able to grip that cord. So that's where the um, double thickness discs are so convenient. And this one has been created so that there's a sort of well at the back, which makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold. And this is also available from other manufacturers and also available in a smaller size. So here's one that I'm working with. It's a beaded design um, and it's the, it's the double thickness. And I just find that very convenient. So what other developments came along? Well, we then had extra slots. Why would you want extra slots? Well, if you're doing um, complicated cord only designs where the pattern is on the surface of the braid you can do some amazing things using lots and lots of cords if you're using 20 to up to 20 24 cords I find that comfortable enough on this regular disc when you go above that it can be confusing so the extra slots give you spaces between your pairs of cords which make it easier to identify where you are and keep the pattern going so um, that that's the 64 slot disc you can also get them in fancy colors and this actually brings me on to quality. These are really cute. Uh, these come in little kits. They're actually aimed more at children. They come with thicker cord um, and they're, they're, they're great little kits. But the foam is much squishier. And that means that the slots don't grip the thinner cords very well. So these are not great for beaded kumihimo. But they still have their place because I think they're very charming little discs. Not all discs have numbers. This disc uh, relies on a system of 
uh, templates that are clipped onto the f surface of the disc and they um, so they show you give you instructions for each individual braid basically uh, and you'll see that this has little sort of um, lumps all the way around but again that makes no difference to the actual braid they're just there for the um, orientation really so that then brings us on to a completely different sort of disc though of course we should really call it a plate because it's not round and this is the square plate this is based on a different Japanese uh, braiding stand and it produces flat braids it's um they look more they're more akin to braid uh, to um weaving really and the uh, braids are flat or ribbon like so that creates a completely different sort of braid uh, and that's a really nice complement to the round disc there is also i don't have an example of it but there's an also an extended version of that that's recently been produced the octo plate and that has more slots, so you can do much more complex and delicate pieces. And sometimes you will find the numbering on these plates are different. This one has uh, numbers across the top and bottom. And then at the sides, it's got slots all the way down. And you've got uppercase um, letters here and lowercase there. You'll find other discs that only have slots in this central section at the sides. Uh, but they all do the same job. And then finally, the Brumihimo disc, which is my own development. Now, this is octagonal in shape, but the shape, as I've said before, the shape of the disc doesn't really affect the braid. What makes it different is the system of slots, dots and numbers that I've worked out. And these are to create a particular braid. Um, it's a traditional braid and it's a straight braid. So it differs to the... Uh, braid that is most commonly made on this regular round disc and um, that can look like this plain or like my little bracelets if they're if they're embellished so that's the Prumihimo disc and the square plate and both of these are not intended to be replacements for this disc they're more ways of extending your skills and taking your braiding to the next level and the final thing I'd like to say about discs is the size of the hole in the middle so the original discs were made with this small hole newer discs tend to be made with this larger hole and that's because as people have used their discs and tried different ways of doing things and explored different materials um, they've found that using things like daggers or, or drops with larger size drops or just larger size beads overall you need a little bit more space here if however you have one with a small hole and you need a bit more space there when you're doing something with larger beads you can just cut it a little bit larger if you need to so basically um, my view is you can never have too many Kumihimo discs. They will wear out after a while, particularly the thinner ones. The slots will get a little bit slack. So just reserve those for your thicker cords and always make sure you've got a new one for when you're using your thinner cords. And I hope basically you've enjoyed that chat through of the different types of discs that are available. And I hope that you, it'll help you to explore new ways of, of doing your kumihimo. If you'd like to see more of these um, lockdown videos, keep an eye out for them or subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified when, you're, when I next put one up. So thank you very much for joining me and until next time, goodbye.